I think you've got to be really self-aware and self-observant of your emotions. Um, at the same time, you, you know, when you go overseas and when you're carrying out operations, you do tend to, you know, like have a switch that, you know, when, when you start doing what it, whatever it is you need to do, you almost like just, or you're able to compartmentalize those emotions um, and switch them off whilst, you, whilst you're doing what you need to do. Um, but you need to be self-observant and self-aware of that because I think that's probably where people could run into problems down the line. You need to deal with that emotion at some stage. Um, and yeah, like I've always been pretty, pretty good with that kind of stuff. Um, there was kind of one experience that I had when, uh, where yeah, like it was quite a, you know, the last three months of a tour was a quite a kinetic, fast moving, you know, we were going out on, on jobs most nights and um, I come back from, so we literally did, yeah, it was, it was a busy time in, in that in that tour and you know we were going out on multiple jobs most nights and to the point that when we did our handover our handover consisted of just going out on the ground and uh yeah you know we we, we managed to do some good work and took down a took down a network in a certain area but i remember returning from that and like i i got fast tracked usually you go and do some sort of decompression and i came back within you know, I remember coming off a job that, you know, we did three three jobs on the bounce, and then I remember coming back and jumped on a plane and flew back to the UK, and I was back in 24 hours on the on the train up to up to Preston to meet my then girlfriend, and uh, I knew inside that like something wasn't right, um, and you know you call it PTSD or whatever, but it was just like a feeling that I had inside that you'd just gone through this. You know, you've just gone through a massive change in environment and uh, emotion and what's been going on and you've literally just, you know, 20 hours later, 24 hours later, you're in a completely different environment. It's, it's a benign environment, there's no danger. And uh, yeah, it was a weird feeling and I just kind of had in my head, I just kind of had in my head that everything will be all right and like, Probably took about three weeks for me to get back to normal. I didn't. I didn't speak about it back then. I didn't tell anyone. Um, but like I was, you know, I was arguing with my girlfriend at the time. Like every night, I found drink had help, which you know isn't the right answer, but it just numbed what I was feeling. And uh, yeah, like I just had it in my head that I think the more time went on, the better I felt, um, which just confirmed that you know, eventually this will pass and I'll be fine, which it did. Um, and it's just it's just a reaction that you have from going from one extreme to another, right? You go from fighting to, you know, being back in, you know, being back in the arms of a loved one, you know, and she's, she's telling you she loves you and you're, you know, you've completely switched off all your, your emotions inside. <laughs> it's a difficult place to be. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things going on, right? And it's hard to pinpoint exactly what's going on, but you know, that's a feeling that you've got inside and yeah, you just gotta roll with it, right? Like at the time, looking back now, you know, I don't think talking about talking about that kind of stuff was was in. You know, I don't think people did it, you know. If, if people had PTSD it was generally you know generally the, the, the whole process of going through that was done away from the rest of the teams. Just cause like men have never been good at sharing that kind of stuff, right? Um, and even when I was in, it was it was quite taboo. Like no one really spoke about it. You'd never confide in your mates about what you'd seen and done and like, maybe you'd had a sleepless night or whatever. Um, you know, now or later on in my career, it completely changed. And I know there's a lot now about men's mental health and which is a great thing, uh, but at that time it was just like me on my own kind of thing. But again, you know, I got through it and that made me a stronger, a stronger person. It's important to find purpose in everything that you do, right? And that's, you know, it's as important, it's as, important as it is in your career or 
in your fitness regime or your motivation. Um, because I guess like purpose brings momentum and me personally, like if I'm not moving forward and I'm stale, then that's like, that's my worst nightmare. <sighs> yeah, like, I think if you want to go anywhere in life, you've got to make some sort of sacrifice. You know, if you think that you've got that safe, comfortable job right now, there's going to be certain things that you're going to have to sacrifice, whether it's friendships, you know, whether it's with loved ones, whether it's with family. But if you want to, if you want to live, by, live, live life by your terms, you've got to make these sacrifices. Now, freedom's important to me. Like that's, freedom is probably one of the reasons why I chose to live like the life that I live now. Um, and it's freedom of everything, right? Freedom of um, having no one, no one tell me what to do when I wake up in the morning and, you know, freedom to, to pick and choose what I want to do each day and, you know, freedom to choose how I earn my money and freedom to choose where I travel and where I want to work from. Um, yeah, like with, with freedom comes a lot of sacrifices too, right? Um, yeah, I see energy is, energy is something we've all got, right? We're all giving off some sort of energy and you, you're around some people that, you know, I call it drains and radiators. Like people are either a drain or they're a radiator. And if you're a drain, you know, you always know that drain when you're around that person. You generally come away feeling drained, right? That's what they do. The negative people. Um, they're the kind of people that make excuses for what they're doing, whether they're wearing the wrong boots or, um, you know, they've not had breakfast that morning. Um, yeah, they're, they're drains, right? And I think the more you're around those people, the more you feel it. Um, and then you've got radiators, and radiators radiate energy, right? You know a radiator, you know when you're around someone because they're, they're positive people. Um, they've always got your back. They've always got new ideas. They're always doing stuff. They're always wanting to move forward. And I think the more you can be around radiators and the less you can be around drains, like the better your energy's gonna be, right?